Welcome to Sculpture Studios. Now, don't go too crazy on this one, just because we're creating a couple of props for a crazy golf company. That's mini golf to all of you guys across the big blue. We've been asked by the Junkyard Golf Club to take their logo, blow it up, and bring it into the 3D world. There's going to be one golf ball made as part of an outside billboard display, and another golf ball themed like a giant wrecking ball as a public photo opportunity. Right, here we are with a 1.2 metre polystyrene hemisphere and this is going to form the golf ball sculpture, well the first one anyway and here a little tool is being developed we've got a bit of plastic and this will stop this carved dome and sandpaper from cutting through any further and this should form a nice uniform pitted dome shape Oh, you look at that. Oh, you've got a hole in one. So here Kevin's creating a time machine. <laughs> or a warp drive, or a nuclear reactor, or a bomb or something. What is this? Um, we've looked online, and there's just a truck ton of mathematics which we're not going to bother to decipher. But we've pretty much solved the pattern of what we think the golf ball should look like. All geometry and all that sort of thing. We've drawn all these lines. Now Kevin's plotting out where each of these should go. We're going to start from the centre and work our way out. As the centre is the visual point of contact that you're going to look at first. And uh, yeah, I think we're pretty much on par with this project. Yeah, although this feels a bit rough at the moment. Rough. Hey, you've got a little bogey there. Uh, a bogey or a birdie? No, no, that was the birdie. Was that a birdie? It was an eagle. An eagle? So after loads of trial and error, we realised this isn't the correct tactic, but Aidan and I think we've cracked it. So over the weekend, we can let this paint dry, come in tomorrow morning and uh, draw the new lines on this, which should, we hope, should <laughs> put us on the right track. Oh, there we go, there we go. I mean, this wouldn't normally be a problem, but the client's given us a ridiculously short deadline. Um, so we need to get this right, I say second, third, fourth time lucky. This obviously takes a little bit of working out. Geometric shapes like this, particularly on spheres, are always awkward to manage, but... Uh, well, what we've found is the simplest things, they end up being the most difficult, really. It has to be right or it's wrong. It's, it's, there's no in-between. It's, it's really maths. You look at a golf ball, it's a simple shape, dots all over it, you don't really think much of it, but trying to create one from scratch, obviously not using a computer or CAD or anything like that, it's, uh, it's awkward. A lot of you might ask, well why don't you just uh, go down a CAD route or have one 3D printed, but that will, that will take two, three weeks on its own, and let's put it this way, we've got half that time for the entire project, that's pattern, mould, cast, finishing, painting, metalwork, so, uh, so yeah, here we go. Show us what you're making there, Sean. Well, here. Don't start at well. <laughs> well. That's how you start. At the top of the tee, and then get the first ones relatively easy. Just getting the second one to match, that's the tricky part. So you're just gradually working down with a wire brush, taking out the dip so that a, a ball of X size, 1.2 meters, should fit inside it. And then I'm gonna create the two bottom sections. Each of these are gonna be bent in a different fashion as per the client's logo. So here we have the two bent elements. Look a bit uh, dishevelled with all the sweaty foam sticking out at the moment. But we just offered it up to the shape and they look about the right size compared to the logo. Just using our PU exploited foam and sticking these to the tops of the tees. Once it's made contact, best thing to do is keep it as still as possible. And then using skewers, hold it together in, uh, in about an hour or so. That will have gone off enough to then trim all the excess squirty foam off. Decided that this is our layout of the whole segments of the balls and everything's going in stripes the way they should be and we've got a rough indication of where they are. Now when I was drilling out my segments I found that some are going just slightly deeper than the other and if they went deeper they went slightly wider so what I've done I've, I've chosen one really nice one and taken a separate mold 
and I'm going to make that my new tool. So every time I push in, they, they all end up identical to one another. Just using this sticky back foil, and it's sticky one side. Covering the whole lot with a furnishing stick, making sure every um, part of it's covered. And uh, no exposure on the polystyrene at all, is that otherwise the the fiberglass will burn into it. And I'm also create, creating a sort of slight edge on that so I can soften it all and make it look like a soft dimple instead of a sharp edge. And that will also help the fiberglass go across the top of it. Once we've got past the whole geometry and tricky positioning aspect, it's plain sailing from here. That doesn't mean this doesn't take a lot of work, this still needs to be covered in a blanket coat of glass fibre very neatly as the blanket coat is going to form the foundation of the overall finish. We go over with gel coats of resin to lose that fibrous texture of the glass mat and then car body fillers sanding it back and repeating the process until we achieve a decent finish. This is eventually going to be painted in a pink gloss so the finish really needs to be quite high. All of the dimples need to be sanded by hand, as the gloss paint and lacquer will pick out any imperfections in the light. Before we get on with the artwork, we're going to start work on the second golf ball. We're going for a slightly different approach here, so that you can see the different processes that could be used to create something like this. Both processes with a similar overall time and cost. We're covering the polystyrene pattern this time with a thin layer of clay, and after plotting the positioning of the dimples, another ball lake once again, but at least it didn't take three tries like the first one, each dimple is scooped out from the shape. A visit from Aidan's big brother John for no apparent reason, just so you can see the likeness runs in the family, and we're getting ready for the next stage of the process. For this golf ball, we're going to be creating a waste plaster mould. This mould will only be able to withstand having one cast taken from it, as it will most likely break up on its own, or need to be broken up to remove the cast from it. This will be a more cost effective solution for a single cast, than say creating a more durable mould from glass fibre. Creating a mould does add another process into the mix, but will eventually save time on the finishing. A cast will be laid up with a gel coat and backed up with glass fibre and will already achieve a general smoothness of the clay master pattern. We don't then need to spend time trying to lose the fiberglass texture and this will need to be a lot smoother considering this one is going to be more interactive. This second golf ball will have a chain coming from the top and will be sitting in a pile of debris. We're creating this smashed into the ground effect using polystyrene and we'll then go down the same process of foiling, fiberglassing the base with a concrete render over the top to finish it off. We're using our squirty polyurethane expanding foam once again to adhere the polystyrene pieces together and then these are dogged in place to let the foam set. Whilst all the foam is going off, the inside of the mould needs to be cleaned out from any residual clay from the master pattern and the clay goes back in the bag for another project. The interior of the mould is sanded down and prepped, adding release agents so the resin cast can release properly. A gel coat layer is added first for a smooth exterior finish and backed up with a durable build-up of glass fibre. This is going to be sat on remember and touched by the general public, so this needs to be nice and strong and durable. The same applies for the base, even more so, as this is literally going to be stood and walked on. We've gone on with a really heavy build-up of glass fibre before this water-based concrete render is applied over the top. The golf ball has been laid up in two fiberglass halves, and then these casts are joined together, laminated from the inside, with the exterior seam line then being cleaned up. The sculpture is going to be kept broken down into these three pieces, the two base sections and the ball itself, for ease of transportation and manoeuvrability at the other end. Right, so what do we have here? Here we have some links we've had made up. They're three millimetres mile steel in a U-shape. We can weld them both together, get the next link in and weld through the top section there. And if you have a look on the floor, we have 1.4 meters long in length and they all go over each other like this. Nice and chunky. We've got to artwork it up to make it look like rusty. 
like the wrecking ball itself and the tees should look really really nice as an individual piece and it's better that the hollow because it would have been miles too heavy if they were solid so should look really really nice we've got the ball and the chain together and we're going to laminate on the inside of this the metal work itself as you can see Jess doing here so it just spread loads the whole lot of the weight so it, it, even if people are on the ball they can lean back here against the chain and it acts as a bit of a backrest to the whole thing so um, and it's a way of keeping the whole weight down as well and giving the top a lot of strength Well, that looks like it's only just holding on. Oh, no, yeah, baby. Just cleaning up all the little bits that anybody might handle. So everything's safe. Health and safety, number one. Once all of the decorations complete, Aiden's going over with a durable car body lacquer to seal the paints and complete the artwork. The idea for these sculptures is to promote the Junkyard Golf Club's new location, moving across Shoreditch in London to Worship Street. The billboard is going to be set up on the corner of Commercial and Quaker Street, just a short distance away from both, between the old and the new locations. This is to urge people to check out the bigger, better, upgraded course in the new spot. So here we are with the finished golf ball. Yeah, it's fiberglass, nice and strong, and it's hollowed out in the back. So nice and light, so it should last their four weeks or whatever their duration is. In fact, it should last years outside. Um, yeah, a nice little prop to make. A bit tricky all around here, as you saw in the video, but we got there in the end. As we had such a tight deadline for this, we've just gone for this exterior flange and this saves them having to create any bolt fixings or brackets on their wall and they can literally just, just screw the whole thing straight into the board as it's hollowed out and just glass fibre. It's relatively light for its size and, uh, and yeah, very nice, very nice indeed. Hopefully they're happy with it. We'd like to thank numerous people and their respective teams from multiple locations for commissioning both the golf ball sculptures. Natasha from Jack Arts, Rosie from Look Look and Amy from the Junkyard Golf Club. Please feel free to leave any comments below as they're always appreciated and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook and follow at Aidan Hines on Twitter and for more of our work visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching. Thank <laughs> you.